let it go, one of the simplest phrases we hear in our daily life. And recently, it has been popularized by a famous Disney movie, and these three powerful words are now sung all over the world. Nevertheless, you have undoubtedly heard a close one utter this phrase to you at a time of crisis. In fact, you have probably said it a few times to your friends too. Perhaps they were pining over an ex, following in self-pity because of bad grades on an exam, or considering sending a mean text to a notch nemesis at work. At the time, the most logical advice you could come up with was to ask them to let it go. But why is letting go considered a solution for most things? After all, ignoring a problem doesn't make it go away, but stoicism says it might. How? Watch this video to find out. Take a break from all the chaos in the modern world, and let's go back in time, way back to the 3rd century before Christ. This was when Stoicism was founded in an ancient city of Athens. Millennia later, writers and thinkers are still writing about and discussing this school of thought. But the essence remains the same. Take control of what you can and use it to your advantage. Simply put, Stoicism seeks to teach people how to better themselves by accepting that some things are rooted in nature and there is only so much we can do. Fortunately, there is a lot we can do to improve ourselves. All you need is a little self-discipline. On that note, here are some nuggets of wisdom that you can implement in your own life. Number 1. Practice control Marcus Aurelius, a Roman emperor, and perhaps the last famous Stoic thinker of antiquity, once said, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Simply put, you shouldn't waste time overthinking things that may derail you from your goals. These may include negative feedback from a figure of authority, something that happened in the past, what others think about you, and so on. Although it seems easier said than done to ignore the negativity in your life, you can start by practicing a chain of thought. So whenever you are distracted, ask yourself this. Do I have a problem in my life currently? If not, then let it go and get back to your work. If yes, then ask yourself again. Can I do anything about it? If not, then let it go and focus on your objectives in life. If yes, then let your thoughts go and work towards your goal. Either way, you must accept your fate and take action. Only by doing so will you find peace. Number 2. Find your purpose. As they say, an empty mind is the devil's workshop. In other words, you are more likely to find yourself in an unfavorable situation while idling away the whole day. It doesn't matter if you're feeling motivated at the moment or whether you have found your purpose or not. What's most important is to begin somewhere. Fortunately, we live in a world full of resources to help us pick up hobbies and new skills. So go ahead, take an online class to learn a new language, or hit the gym and start working out. You can even create an online blog if you enjoy writing. Or perhaps you can start your own YouTube channel and begin making videos. For some, inspiration and a definitive purpose may strike at a certain point during their lifetime. But you cannot bank on chance. Instead, you must be rational and take control of your life. After all, that is the essence of Stoicism. Number 3. Be consistent. One fine morning, you are motivated to go to the gym. A week of regular workouts later, you take an innocent rest day, which turns into a week-long break. Eventually, you give up on losing weight. Instead, you lose all your motivation. A tale as old as time. Many people abandon their goals, despite having a solid plan and a purpose, because they fail to be consistent and put things off for tomorrow. On the other hand, self-disciplined individuals work towards their goal every day, milking every bit of motivation they can garner. Here too, the same rule applies. You do need an inherent burning desire to achieve greatness. The secret is to put in effort every day until it becomes a habit. Eventually, you will reap results and that itself will motivate you to continue the journey. Once you are able to wrap your head around the benefits of overcoming hardship and get a taste of the fruits of labor, self-discipline follows. In fact, some individuals who live by stoicism often expose themselves to voluntary hardship. 
For instance, you may take a digital detox and stay away from all electronics for a day. Try out fasting for a day, or maybe sleep on the floor instead of your cozy bed. The ultimate goal is to constantly taste your mind and body, training them for hardships that may come in the future. At the same time, delayed gratification may provide you with a new perspective and an increased appreciation for things we often take for granted. Number 4. Journaling for self-improvement Bullet journals and personal diaries are nothing new. In fact, Marcus Aurelius also maintained his own notebook, which was later immortalized as the Meditations. Many philosophers before and after him recorded their lengthy discourses which now serve as excellent self-help guides. But you can start with just three simple questions. Firstly, ask yourself this. What have I accomplished today that brings me closer to my goals? This will provide you with insight into your progress. Next, ask yourself where you went wrong and why it may have happened. Lastly, think about what you could have done better and how you would act if faced with the same problem in the future. And as you may have already guessed, the key to progress while journaling is consistency. So don't forget to write in your journal every day. Ultimately, deep introspection and self-reflection will point you in the right direction, providing purpose and motivation as you fill in the pages. Number 5. Don't expect perfection. You could use this as a mantra in your daily life, especially if you are dealing with an annoying co-worker or family member. Perhaps your cubicle partner talks too much, or your spouse chews too loudly. And sometimes, when you're having a bad day, these peeves can get on your nerves. As a result, you may want to snap at them in an angry fit. Here too, self-discipline is key to maintaining a calm headspace and not letting your negative thoughts get to you. In fact, one of the great Stoic thinkers, Epictetus, blames the individual for their own feelings of annoyance or loathing. Simply put, he believed that the best way to deal with your grievance with others was to control the impulse to react. So all you need to do is step back, take a deep breath, and then respond. Perhaps you can take a page out of Marcus Aurelius's books and think about how your temporary outrage won't matter in the grand scheme of things. A hundred years from now, neither you nor your annoying sibling will be in the picture. So, why break a bond or lose your equanimity because of an insignificant trifle? Or you can even try pondering upon your own shortcomings. After all, there may be some people who are annoyed with you as well. While self-reflection may help gain empathy for others, it is also essential to not expect perfection from yourself, just like you wouldn't from them. Either way, unrealistic expectations will always leave you upset and unfulfilled. Sometimes, you just cannot control your imperfections, or what you perceive as imperfections. Maybe some things are part of your nature, just like how an orange won't grow on an apple tree, and an apple tree won't produce figs. So what do you do? You let it go. If you liked this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and share it with a friend who can use some self-discipline in their life.